Hi, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing something pretty cool. We are going to be setting up the new Park database connection for KiCad 7 that was just released. So what this is, is a, essentially a way for KiCad to connect to a SQL database for uh, sharing parts. So one reason you might want to do this is say you're on a larger team or you just want to have a better organization structure, you can put all of your custom parts as references in a SQL database, it's just a regular table, which gives you the ability to easily navigate and control those parts in conventional SQL interfaces. Uh, we're going to be using Postgres for this. And then you can link them into KiCad and actually say, hey, everyone on my team, connect to this database. And at this point, we're all sharing the exact same parts. And if you update a part that's in the database, it will automatically just uh, update in the actual SQL server. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into this and get going. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to pull up the actual documentation that just came out for the KiCad 7 database libraries. Uh, right here, you can actually read through this and it does a decent job of explaining what's required to get this working. Um, I didn't see any actual direct examples though, which is why I'm making this video. Uh, we're going to be using a SQL database. So if I go over to PG Admin, I'm not going to show you how to set up this SQL database, but I'm going to just pull up what I have set up already. So Right here, I've connected to a server that I've set up as a VM on uh, Proxmox in my uh, local server network. And from here, I'm going to actually say, okay, I've got a database. I've got one that's called KiCad Parts that I made. And inside, I have uh, multiple tables. Right now, I only have the one, but I'd have a table for every part. So we go look at my schemas. We're going to see tables. Pull them down. I have one table for all my resistors. And right now, there's just one resistor in there. But this is how this is going to be structured. So I've got my server that I've got running a Postgres instance on. It's called KiCad. And then in there, I have a single database, which is my KiCad parts. So that's where all the parts get stored. Then inside of that database, I have a table for all of my individual components. So I'd have a table for resistors, a table for capacitors, a table for FPGAs. And from there, what I do is inside of every table, every entry is going to be a specific part. So if I go ahead and do a quick little query on this, just to get all the stuff I have in there, let's go view data, all rows. You're going to see I have one entry in here, and it's one little test part I did. So what I've got is I've got a part ID, which is just a random part ID I made up, a symbols column, a footprints, an MPN, and we're going to walk through all these and what they mean and why they're needed. Um, but I just want to show you what the actual table looks like up front. From there, we can actually make a connection to KiCad and start pulling in the parts. So let's go ahead and add a new table, and we're going to actually walk through this. So. So if I look at KiCad, it's going to show me the actual file that I need to add as my um, part. I'm going to point to this part from my KiCad symbol manager. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to look at this. Let's walk through what this means. All right, it's saying, hey, I've got a database library that I'm going to call some part or something. I'm going to edit that. I can give it a little description. Uh, it's going to say it's connected with ODBC. Now that is actually very important. I'm going to show you how to set that up in Postgres real quick. But this connection piece actually proved to be the hardest part. Getting the parts to actually uh, link up in the database properly was not hard, but actually getting KiCad to properly connect to the database using ODBC through Linux um, proved to be a little challenging. So I'll show you how to do that. And then all it's going to say is, hey, this is where you're going to fill out all the tables you have. So it says right now I have one table that I'm going to call resistor and it's going to link to the KiCad table that is called resistors. So let me say that again. As far as KiCad is concerned, I'm going to call this resistors as a part or as a part grouping. But it's going to directly map to resistors as that keyword. So my table has to directly be named whatever is in this table string right here. Then I'm going to say, hey, I have a unique key. So what key is going to identify uh, all these parts from one another? And that is going to be called part ID. Then I also have, uh, and that's going to directly match with the uh, column name right there and I did make that a unique key. Then we're going to have, okay, we've got the symbol. So what points to the symbol? Well, it's the symbols column, capital. So match it right there. Then footprints, footprints, same thing. And then inside, I also have optional fields. So I've got the column, which is MPN. So this is saying, hey, <clears throat> take the column in the database, MPN, and match it to the KiCad name, MPN. Then you can have, say, okay, make sure it's visible, blah, blah. I have the same thing with value. So for resistors, obviously I want a value. Say, hey, take the column that is in the database called value right here and map it to the value keyword in KiCad. Then I have some additional properties that I can add in here. Nothing too crazy. So if let's go ahead and actually 
I want to make a database one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go to my tables and I'm gonna make a new table. So using whatever software you want, if you just wanna write direct SQL, that's fine, but you wanna make a new table. So let's call this capacitor, call it capacitors, pub, uh, plural. I'm gonna give it some columns. So first thing I wanna do is I want to give it a part ID. And I've named these all, I've made these all text. Uh, that works. I don't know if that's the best choice or if that's what it's expecting, but it is what worked for me. So I'm just gonna roll with that. Then I definitely need symbols. Make it text as well. We'll do footprints. Spell text, and I'll go ahead and fast forward to uh, getting this done. Cool, so I filled out just what my columns are gonna be, how this table is gonna be structured. I do wanna make this a primary key for the part ID, and I'm gonna hit save. So I'm gonna hit save, and now I've got a whole other table called capacitors. So if I do a quick little view all data, there should be nothing in there, but I'll get the little columns. Cool, so there's nothing there, but I'm seeing the columns and they, set up, they look like they're set up correctly. So let's jump back over to KiCad, and let's see how we actually will add this. So if I go to preferences and I go to manage symbol libraries, I'm gonna make this a little bigger. I've already added this, but I want to show you where this file lives and how to actually edit it. So the very bottom, I added a uh, part grouping called database and I'm pointing it to a specific file. So what I'm doing is I've taken this file right here as their starting point. I copied and pasted it and I saved it to my desktop as parts database KiCad DBL. So let's go ahead and open that real quick. Okay, so I've got open VS Code and you're gonna see a couple things here. You're gonna see details about the connection that I'll show you. And you're also going to see the actual libraries or the tables. So what I wanna do is I want to go to the grouping that is a single library. From here, I can see, okay, I'm going to go ahead and just add another one. So let's go ahead and copy this. I believe I need to do a comma separated and I'm gonna paste that. Okay, so we've copied that in and now we've got uh, another little table here, but we wanna fill this out. So let's make this capacitors, because we're gonna call it capacitors for KiCad. Sheepers. And then we'll do the same thing right here and we'll link it to the table. So remember we call the table capacitors. Um, I'm gonna leave all this the same because uh, we mimicked the exact same one they had up here. And if I save this, now we need to go ahead and edit the connection. So we're gonna have to add a piece for our configuration of our ODBC. And from there, we should be able to actually just connect it into our database. So first thing we wanna do is let's go over to preferences, let's go back to manage simple libraries, we'll go to the very bottom and you'll see I added a part. So how did I do this? All I did is I went here and I said, okay, we'll do YouTube. I'm not gonna actually say this, but then we wanna file, we want to go to the actual KiCad DBL file. So I go browse, we we'll go to the desktop, you'll see it pops up right there. So if I hit open, it's going to natively see that new file. It's going to say, hey, I recognize that this is a database and then I can give a little description, database components. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to go ahead and actually delete that row. And this is exactly what I've got right here. Cool, so now that we've got that, if we went to go ahead and connect and save right now, it's gonna say, hey, I can't actually connect to this database because we haven't filled out the actual ODBC part. Okay, so to install the OBDC driver for Linux, we're actually gonna go over to our machine that we've got KiCad installed on, so my desktop. So we want to go to the Microsoft install uh, instructions for OBDC 18, uh, specifically we're gonna go to the Ubuntu and all this linked. So if I go to the bash script that I pulled this all into, all this is connect to their repo list and then actually installs the utilities. So if I exit this, and I go ahead and run that with some pseudo permissions. That should have already ran in general. But from there, I should have my ODBC stuff set up for me. So now what I need to do is I actually need to go make an edit to the config and tell it, hey, I've got this connection to this database that I'm gonna pass the credentials into for that. So now actually what I do is I wanna add a DNS, which is a data source name for the actual OBDC or ODBC. I'm gonna go to this page, I'll point to it from Oracle, but I'm gonna type in ODBC inst dash J. So I'm gonna print out all my connections, or all my files rather. So I can see, okay, here's where all my files actually live. I need to edit this system data source one. So I'm gonna to go to Vim, I'm going to go to Etsy, OD, oops, ODBC dot, so from here you can see my connection piece and I'll have this little template at the description. So that's the name I'm actually going to pass to the KiCad file we were just editing. 
Um, it just has basic description of what the formatting is for Postgres. It's also going to show, okay, the database name. So the name of the actual database I made, if we go look right here, remember it was KiCad parts right there. So I need to tell it that right here. So I'm gonna give it the IP address of the server that's running on, so this is my local server. The username I connect with, I'm just connecting with the default username. Uh, right here, I removed mine, but this is where you would type in the password. And then the default port for Postgres, you should need to uh, change that unless you've actually changed it yourself. And that should be all you need. So let's go ahead and exit this file and let's go point to it in the actual KiCad file. Cool, so we've got that pulled back up and now all we need to do is we need to add just the DSN name that we made. So that was the KiCad name right there and we should be good for a connection. So you can also use for the connection string and username and password, but I noticed if I just passed the DSN, um, obviously we just filled out username and password already in that file, so you don't need it here. So if I go ahead and save this file now, uh, what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and close that if you go back over to KiCad, now what should happen is if you go to the manage symbol library and you go re-hit OK on this, you should get it connecting with no errors to the actual database. So at this point, obviously I've already done that, I can close it. Um, sometimes, once that's done, I actually do like to, if I've been editing that file that we just had open, I will make changes to this and then I'll save it and then I'll actually close KiCad altogether. So let's go ahead and close that. Let's open KiCad again. So now I can actually go to the schematic editor. So let's open the schematic editor and let's go to add part. It's gonna pull in the symbol library and you're gonna see a very important thing. Now if I go to the D section, database, we're gonna see database resistors and database capacitors I've just added. So right here, if I open database resistors, we're gonna see that one entry that I had and I'm referencing this particular uh, symbol. So that's pretty cool, it's connecting. Let's go now back to the actual database that we made for capacitors and let's fill this out so we actually have a part with it. So I'm gonna pull this to the side. I'm gonna close this rather, close that. And I'm actually gonna preemptively open up the tools and the symbol editor because I want to, uh, I'm gonna need to reference some of that. So if I open up the PG admin thing, you can see I added one row already just as a test to the capacitors off screen. But let's go ahead and add a row. So I'm gonna go here and start filling this out. Part ID, I'm gonna make, obviously you'd fill in the actual part you're referencing. For me, I'm just gonna make a random number. All right, symbols. Now this is where it gets very important to know. So the way this database thing works, it's not actually storing data uh, parts in the database. It's storing references to parts you have locally on your system. So you would still have some sort of shared actual part here, but this way you can quickly change those footprints or change those symbols and just have it all linked with the one database. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna actually make a, I'm gonna go to device. I'm gonna find a capacitor. So let's look at, I got capacitor polarized. What does that look like? Yeah, that seems decent. So now what I need to do to actually add that reference, I'm going to go to the grouping, which is device. So I'm gonna say device colon, and then I'm gonna say the actual name of the parts. So this is C underscore polarized. Hit okay. Now let's add a footprint. So I wanna give this an actual footprint. So let's close this. Let's go to tools, footprint editor. And let's go to, let's say, I'm looking for capacitor. Do we have anything? Sure, that looks good. So let's go back to this guy. And it's gonna follow the exact same naming convention. So I need to do capacitor. SMD and then colon and then the name of it. So let's do CP underscore E L E C underscore three by five point three. Hit okay. Oops. Instead of value, let's say let's give it a value of fifty nanofarads. And then I'll leave MPN as blank because it's optional. So if you had it, you can fill it out. Now I know how to save that row into the database, cool, so it should be there. Close that out, close that out. I'm going to actually restart KiCad just to make sure it actually loads properly, re-pulls the parts. Go back to my schematic editor and hit add parts. Go down to database, I should see capacitors. I see this O2 one and boom, it's gonna pull up the symbol and the actual uh, footprint. So if I hit okay, I can just add it like a normal part. Look at that, isn't that awesome? Now, if I were to go edit the actual part, reference part that this is pointed to, so that actual uh, 
the uh, CP ELEC 3.5, then it's also going to make changes to this same reference. So the database part you're pulling in is also going to have changed. So there you have it. You can actually utilize this database to pull in parts and have footprints and add those references. Now you do still need the local part on your system. That's probably tracked through something like GitHub in a more conventional method. But I wanted to make a tutorial of how you actually physically do it because I saw the instructions on their site and I was like, okay, that's good enough to maybe play with it, but I want a very uh, clear path for how to actually get a part in a database as a table and then pull it in. So hopefully that's accomplished that. If you've liked this video, if it was helpful to you or if you think, okay, that's something I can build off of, uh, please like and subscribe, you know, for the whole algorithm thing. I'm trying to be more consistent about the videos and when the views go up and the watch hours go up, it's much more uh, motivating to keep doing them. I've got another couple videos coming out soon, so uh, subscribe and yeah, I'll see y'all later.